parable commonly referred to as the dishonest steward that intrigues and confuses a lot of people. Because if you read it at face value, it provokes a common reaction. Is Jesus really approving of the steward's dishonesty? Is Jesus endorsing dishonesty altogether? Well, the answer is no, of course not. The dishonesty part of the story actually occurred before the parable itself. The steward has squandered his master's property. And because of that, he is informed that he will be relieved of his duties. But the steward is able to save his job by having the master's debtors write new promissory notes for lesser amounts. Notice though, that the steward isn't being vengeful, nor is he attempting to swindle the master out of some of the money he owes. He was simply being prudent, and his actions were neither dishonest nor injury-causing. Prudently, yes, he acted in his own interest, but at the same time, in the best interest of all the other parties concerned. And instead of being a victim of circumstance, you know, like, woe is me, he turns a bad situation around to where everyone wins. Everyone's happy. Hence, there's no praising of dishonesty or malice here. Rather, the praises go to the ability to use our material sources wisely in a time of crisis. That's prudence which is common sense and judgment. And as I said earlier, the great St. Thomas Aquinas sums it up best by calling prudence right reason in action. Now, a little twist to this parable is that it actually never tells us how the steward supposedly squandered the property. It's really not clear if he did so through dishonest greed or by foolish business uh, decisions. In other words, we simply don't know if the reports against the steward are true. All we know is that his master believes the reports and is ready to fire the steward because of them. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that judging comes easily for many of us. I bet every time we start reading this parable, we prejudge the steward as being guilty. We tend to judge without any proof. Well, for instance, let's be honest. How quickly have we judged Palestinians as terrorists? Simply because of what we've been fed over the years by the one-sided Western media. Unless you've lived in the shoes of a Palestinian in Gaza or the West Bank, as I have, under severe oppression and discrimination and intimidation and denial of basic human rights and needs, and with many of your family members dead and never knowing if you're going to be alive the next day, well, don't judge. Please don't judge or condemn. Well, meantime, we continue to pray for peace in the Holy Land around the, and around the world. And in the spirit of the great peacemaker, Saint Leo the Great, whose feast we celebrate today, may we learn to initiate reconciliation when others have wronged us and be quick to repent when we have wronged others. May we always be committed to seeking and speaking the truth even when it's not popular, and pursue meaningful relationships to help us see the humanity on the other side. And may we not be blinded by ideology that keeps us from living out the gospel of Jesus, the gospel of peace and love, and the commandment 
of loving our neighbor as ourselves. Oh, how different our world would be if we just focus more on the good of others rather than their failings. So salam and shalom to all of you. Thank you for participating in this production of our virtual mass. Your presence means so much. Every day, so many parishioners connect to OLPH through the digital ministry. The digital ministry is one of almost 80 ministries supported by the parish. That's why your support of the parish is crucial, so we can continue to have the resources to fund all of our ministries that touch the lives of many. Thank you for watching, continue to watch, and thanks again for your support. Thank you.